God. No, they're only white witches because they're... if you're initiated, mm -hmm. you are a white witch, and there's only one way to get into the craft, and yeah. that is to be initiated. So what? What are black witches? I mean, the, the, these people who are supposed to be bad and evil. Well, I don't know who they are, but they're just people who use the craft, use the name of the craft, call themselves witches. You mm. see, uh, and they're, and they're nothing to do with. Patricia's parents, Claire and Alfred Dawson, 1915. Patricia was born in Sheffield, a very industrialised region of hard-working people in northern England. Patricia was born during a thunderstorm. At 12.30 a.m. on the 14th of October, 1927. Claire Dawson with a very young Patricia Dawson. The Dawsons lived next door to a palmist and fortune teller, Madame Melba. Madame Melba displayed a picture of a palm in her window, showing all the esoteric meaning of the lines of the palm. Madame Melba predicted that Patricia would be well known in the future. Also, that the moon's influences would be strong in Patricia's life, giving her the gift of clear sight and clairvoyancy. From an early age, Patricia often identified herself with fairies and the craft, dressing up as a fairy for fancy dress parties. At a children's birthday party, she was chosen to be fairy on the moon and was whirled about seated in a crescent moon. Because Patricia was a shy child, her mother hauled her off to the prestigious grand school of dancing, saying it will broaden her out before age of five, Patricia had passed all of her ballet examinations. Later, going on to perform a solo number, So Shy, at the Empire Theatre in Sheffield. Patricia was well appreciated with a roar of applause. Patricia was awarded trophies and medals for the talent at the International Dancing Master Association in Blackpool. During World War II, her first professional engagement was to be a Tiller girl. After the war, her career in the theatre continued. An audition for Barney Colhan at the BBC. This resulted in being offered a contract for the popular BBC programme Let's Have a Go, which featured Wilfred Pickles. While playing summer season in Shanklin in the Isle of Wight, she met her future husband, Arnold Crowther. Arnold was a skilled stage magician, ventriloquist and puppeteer.
Around this time, Patricia went to a hypnotist for a past life regression. And this is what happened. We held sessions about twice a week. He found she was a very good subject, and he started taking her back through various dates in history. For many of these dates, he got no results at all. But at the year 1670, she spoke in the voice of an old pro, said she lived in a hut, kept a frog, a hen, a duck, a goat, and a cat. She was 66 years old, and her name was Polly. We asked her, are you a witch? A witch? That's what people say of me. I hate them all. All the high and the mighty. They don't frighten me. Do you work spells for them? Spells? Spells? That's all they want. I spit on them. It makes me sick. Tell us some of these spells. And she did. Through me, she told many spells. One was to make a man return to his wife. Moon blood of a virgin, mixed with the hair of a man she desires to come back. Do it over a hot fire. Mix well and think of what you desire. At the same time, chanting. Get thee a man, get thee a maid. Mix it up well, be not afraid. This you will get, this you will eat. Mix it with bread and mix it with meat. At that time... People interested in getting a good harvest. In 1960, Arnold introduced Patricia to Gerald Gardner. Gerald Gardner was an English witch. Gardner authorized many influential books on witchcraft. Gerald also had a museum of witchcraft on the Isle of Man. Gerald was instrumental for introducing contemporary witchcraft to the public. After several meetings with Gerald, Patricia was initiated into witchcraft by Gerald in his private magic room on the Isle of Man. November 1960, Patricia and Arnold were married in a hand-fasted ceremony by Gerald. The Crowthers were initiated into the first members of their coven in 1961. Crowthers gave many interviews and speaking engagements, always promoting knowledge of the craft. They became the High Priestess and High Priest of the Sheffield Coven, which they founded in 1961. They also authored many interesting books on witchcraft. In 1971, Patricia and Arnold wrote and presented a spell of witchcraft which was produced and broadcast on the BBC radio. On this broadcast, Patricia relates one of her most occult experiences. In fact, the most remarkable one of my life. There are few people who can say, as I can, with conviction, that they have actually been out of the body. Such a thing happened in the most unlikely place, a dentist's chair. I had to have a wisdom tooth extracted and decided to have gas, as I've had many times before. This time, however, was different from the previous one. I settled down in the chair 
and was determined to mentally examine and note the various sensations of being put under. The first few seconds I just breathed deeply as instructed. Then I felt a heaviness in the body. And soon after that, a tightening in the head. Suddenly I felt excruciating agony. And this went on and on and on and on. Until quite suddenly I was in a black space and surrounded by the most brilliant stars. The pain had gone. My body had gone. I felt as light and as free as air and unbelievably happy. Out there, in that strange place, alone. And then I heard a voice. You must go back now. You must go back now. You must go back now. But I thought, I don't want to go back. It's so lovely here. I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back. I was being shaken hard by the nurse. She said, we thought you were never going to wake up again. You might say it was a dream, but I know it wasn't. For one thing, I'd had dreams under anaesthetic before, and this was nothing like them. It was far too clear and real in every detail. I'm sure that that place was, in fact, the astral plane. The dentist said he'd never heard of a case where the patient under gas felt the tooth being felt drawn. The tooth being drawn. There have been many people who have had similar out-of-the-body experiences. Too many for them to be dismissed as merely fantasy. Shakespeare said, There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. Patricia provided many services for those who would ask for help including spell casting, exercising ghosts and spirits. We call upon thee, O mighty mother of us all, bringer of all fruitfulness, by seed and root, by stem and bud, by leaf and flower and fruit, by life and love, do we invoke thee. They also wrote seasonal rituals and introduced new music and poetry. Into At the mysterious Rollwright Stones, Patricia is with occult writers W.G. Gray and R. Stewart. Patricia appeared on many shows as a guest. Uh, this is the James Well Show. Patricia standing up for witchcraft because beliefs. Because the people in the craft today are very marvellous people. They are uh, people you find everywhere, in every walk of life. But and not they? only here, but uh -huh. in America, in Australia, in Europe, everywhere. Many, many thousands of people. Yeah, but are there people, do you think, who are using the craft perhaps as a front for other no, things? Not, not no, not the genuine craft, no. Because the person is uh, two years before they're initiated, easily. Mm -hmm. I, I don't no, think they that are. These, all these allegations mm -hmm. are being put across onto the occult, onto the old religion, because there's so many uh, priests of the Christian church mm -hmm been found guilty of child abuse over well, the last let, let, two let me, years listen. and also through the last mm. few months actually me, and yesterday there was about four in the paper let me after her 70th birthday while meditating in her magic circle she received clairaudient guidance that she should call herself a grandmother of the craft of the wise No, 
I think Wicca is barely a modern word because they didn't like witchcraft because witchcraft has all these other connotations connected with the devil, according to Christianity that is, mm -hmm. and uh, black magic and all this sort of thing, and, uh, which it hasn't really, nothing, but, but uh, that's what they, people think. So they brought this other word in, Wicca, which is a masculine, actually, it's a masculine word. If you said W double uh, I, sorry, W I double C E, it would be feminine. Ooh. But it's W I double C A, which right. is masculine. But never mind, it's uh, it's okay. It's an okay word. To so pause with love for the purpose and love for the cause. You are your own devil. You are your own god. You fashion the path that your footsteps have trod, and no one can save you from error or sin until you have heart to the spirit within. We must not forget in the New Age the ruler of Aquarius, none other than the Star Goddess, whose white hand even now beckons the children of the earth to become children of the stars, Patricia Crowther. <laughs>